Welcome to College Football Now. I am Tom Downey. Today's show, we're taking a look at Dane Brugler's top running back prospects for the 2025 NFL Draft. He's got his top five overall, his top 10 underclassmen, and top 30 senior prospects, which I think is pretty damn awesome. We'll go more in depth in the top five to begin today's show. First up, in maybe a bit of a surprise, is Ashton Ginty, the Boise State running back. Dane's got some uh, verified weights for most of these prospects. 5'8 and a quarter, 217, that boy thick. And it shows up in his tackle breaking. His contact balance truly is remarkable. In fact, he averaged 4.52 yards after contact last season. Now, remember, a decent part of that came against, you know, Mountain West uh, competition. He's got some fumbling issues. He had five fumbles last year. He's got some chances to showcase what he's able to do, including a game against Oregon this year at least. Now, do you want more NFL Draft YouTube videos? If you do, simply share this one. Let's show the bosses here at Chat Sports this is what you guys want so I can continue to do them for you. Number two is Ollie Gordon, and I know people who have Gordon at number one among their backs, and I totally get it. Uh, estimated 6'1", 215. For a bigger guy, he's got some pretty good juice in his lower body of being able to make guys miss Sometimes you see those taller backs and they're not quite as, as shifty. Gordon is pretty shifty. I think at times he does run a little tall. And this is, Dane had some best trait, trait to improve that we're, so far we're on the same page with, with Gene T and Gordon. Also going to have to verify his uh, and, and answer questions about his DUI arrest. Because, you know, he wasn't 21 and had open bottles of both tequila and vodka in his car. So red flags on that front. Number three is Omarion Hampton out of North Carolina. Just under six foot, verified 219. I think there's a good balance of some power and speed here. I don't think he's the fastest player. I don't think he's the, the strongest player. But I think there is a lot of both. He, he, he can break tackles. He's not always going to run away from guys, but he's got good shiftiness, good vision. He's able to find holes. Well balanced is kind of how I, I feel about him as a runner, uh, UNC leaned on him pretty heavily last year. They will lean on him probably even more so this past season. Also, unlike most running backs, I think he's actually a pretty good pass protector. We don't always get to see that consistently from prospects because turns out you want to get your best players the ball, and they're often involved in, in the passing game more than the pass blocking game. Didn't have a running back going round one this year. I feel pretty confident we'll have at least one going round one this year, and I think any of the top four have a chance to make that happen. We'll get to number four here in a second. But will they back go in the first round of this year's draft? The pinned comment of today's video. Y for yes, N for no. Quinshawn Junkins, part of AA Dynamic Duo at, uh, up at Ohio State in the backfield, transferred in from Ole Miss. He's 5'11 and some change, 219. I think the vision is good. He wasn't as productive as his ridiculous uh, freshman campaign, but was also still really good. 78 force missed tackles. Had some good yards after contact this past season. There is a lot of, I think, third down room to grow. He wasn't overly involved in the pass catching game. Wasn't a great uh, pass protector either. I am curious just how fast he actually runs. I think he might be more steady than explosive, if that differentiation makes sense. But there is a lot to like about him and his teammate the first senior on this list, who could have gone pro last year and would have been in the conversation to be the first running back taken alongside Jonathan Brooks and, and others, Travion Henderson. He's not the biggest guy. He's under 5'10". He's just barely 200 pounds. But if Junkins doesn't have the same home run ability, Henderson does. 61-yard touchdown run against Notre Dame. Had the 75-yard run against Minnesota. I think he is a little bit prone to trying to bounce it wide sometimes. But I do think in particular with this new Chip Kelly offense they're going to run, I think his style fits really well um, in terms of if he, when getting to the outside, eh, some of the inside stuff might be a bit of a better fit for, for Junkins. Both those guys are probably going to cut into each other's like workload. Also might end up being a positive because they'll be super efficient and their workloads will be low. And when you've already got 446 career carries, keeping that workload down is probably a big deal for Henderson. You know, if he were to have, you know, 700 touches, you know, or carries going into his NFL career, it actually is sometimes a negative for NFL teams. 
That's the top five from Dane. There are prospects he left off, who we'll discuss more in depth here in a moment. Who did Dane leave off his top five? Let me know in the comments of today's show. I am a fan of Rutgers running back Kyle Monadagai. Not a household name because he plays for Rutgers. I totally get that. 5'9", 210. Production's really impressive. There is some power in his game. Despite, let's be honest, not playing in a great Rutgers offense, he's gotten better each season. He had a five-yard per carry average, I think is, is a good number to at least be hitting if you're going to command attention there, and did it on 242 carries. It's a huge part of the Rutgers offense. Do not sleep on him. Number three is Donovan Edwards, and Edwards is in kind of a, I'd say a pretty massive season for him. I'm glad he went back to school because it's going to make my eval easier. Which Donovan Edwards do you get? The 2021 version was stupid good. Seven yards per carry on 140 uh, carry sample size. That's a sizable amount of touches, and he damn near had 1,000 yards. Now, he got, a, he got a bit banged up, and he was not nearly as efficient this past season. So which one do you get? Do you get the 2023 version, the 2022 version? I think, I think you can go, look, he's going to get fed. Blake quorum has gone. Michigan wants to run the, the football. The workload so far has not been that high, so you can manage a heavy workload season. I'm excited to see which Edward shows up this year. Phil Maffa, number four out of Clemson. He showcased some flashes in still fairly limited sample size at Clemson. It's a good name to monitor for a prime breakout campaign. Montrell Johnson out of Florida. By the way, Maffa's a six foot and change, 233 is a big boy. Johnson's 5'11, 219. We'll get to the other former Florida back later on in today's show. But I do like, despite some issues overall with the Florida, Florida coaching staff, I like Billy Napier's ground game. I think Johnson could be super productive this upcoming season. Now, today's show is made possible by Game Time. They are an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, and you can get college football tickets there, of course, as well. I want to have an easy, simple time and money-saving process when it comes to buying tickets. That's why I love the Game Time app. You can save up to 60% off buying last-minute tickets for sports, comedy, concerts, theater, and more. You can save even more with exclusive in-app deals like flash deals, zone deals, and they're going to give you $20 off your first purchase when you use code chat sports. Download the game time app today, create your account and use code chat sports for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Now look, terms apply as everything does in life, but remember to create your account and redeem code C H A T S P O R T S chat sports for $20 off that link chat sports or the, the promo code chat sports, the link at gametime.co will be in the comments and the description of today's show. Devin Neal, I think is maybe a little bit underrated. It's probably a bit overrated in CFB 25, but he's fun and explosive. Good size, almost six foot, 220 pounds. He has been remarkably efficient two straight years for Kansas. The Jayhawks are not your daddy's Jayhawks at football. They're actually like really good. And they're super fun to watch because of players like Devin Neal. We are at the point the college football video game is here. We're going to have real conversations of, or at least like questions, comments, like, well, he's good in CFP 25. Neal's good in real life, too. I think six was actually a little bit low for him. Jaquavius, a.k.a. Woody Marks, uh, formerly of Mississippi State, now at, uh, at USC. They had a good transfer running back coming last year. Now they're doing it again. I, I want to see more efficiency in the ground game from Marks. He's been a, a part-time runner at times who was heavily involved as a pass catcher back in 2021 when he had 83 grabs uh, for Mississippi State. So he has the pass catching value that has been established and it was the, it was the style of the offense. I want to see like bigger big plays overall handle a bigger workload too. All right, we'll go a little bit quicker on some of these prospects because there's 30. <laughs> there's 30 of them, you know? Uh, R.J. Harvey out of Central Florida is a little bit undersized. He's 5'8 and 1 8 204. Uh, Ulysses Bentley, the fourth, is now primed for a bigger timeshare at, at Ole Miss with, with the transfers that have happened there. Nathan Carter is one of the small. Both these guys are smaller, by the way. They're under 5'9 and, and they're under 200 pounds, but there is some, I think, explosive ability there. A not small runner 
is Raheem Rocket Sanders, who isn't really that much of a rocket. Uh, he's 241. He's a big boy. Boy, had a great uh, 2023, yeah, 2022 campaign at Arkansas. Barely played it all last year. Now at South Carolina, he'll be heavily involved. LSU always produces good backs. Williams is pretty small, though. He's under 5'8", 200 pounds. Jaquez Hunter is going to get a heavy workload for Auburn this year. Basial Tootin, I think, is, a, again, a lot of these guys are smaller, but there's some, some talent there. Noah Whittington, someone's got to get carries with Bucky Irving gone. He could be in for a massive breakout season as well. Who is your favorite running back prospect in the 2025 NFL Draft? Sound off for me in the comments of today's show. A couple transfers here I want to mention. Again, we're going, we're going faster so it's not a 45-minute video because the bosses get mad at me when I do that. Uh, Chip Trayonum now at Kentucky because OSU got other running backs in there. He's a big boy, under 5'11", but 223. Roydell Williams transfers from Alabama to Florida State. Uh, Justice Hunter not draft eligible. He was Williams was going to be behind him at minimum. Gets a bigger workload for Florida State. And I actually was surprised that Taj Brooks was this far down. He's 231 and 5'9", so he's got that thick frame that I like. You know, he low-key had a 1,500-yard season last year with a 5.3 average, 10 touchdowns. I'm not saying he's got to be top 10 or top 5, but I, I was surprised he was all the way down there at number 19 among the senior-only running backs. Other seniors, uh, Missouri loses their top two guys. Nate Noll next up there. Again, Logan Dix is a chance to, to, to contribute there. Corey Kiner is, I think, going to get a big workload for Cincinnati with what they want to do on offense. Marcus Carroll, again, another Missouri running back. So, again, there's opportunities galore there. A couple smaller school guys, Marion Lukes, Marcus Yarns. I'd be, I'll be lying to you. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't watched any Delaware film yet. I'm not going to lie to you guys there. Jaquin and Jackson, though, another big boy, 6'2". 234. I did round an extra half inch there. We'll get to the juniors, the underclassmen here in a minute. But if you love the NFL draft, subscribe. This is the place for you. If you haven't already, I'm, I'm, I'm borderline begging you, hit that sub button right now. The top four guys on Dane's list were all underclassmen. Number five is Damian Martinez, the uh, running back from Miami of Florida, formerly at Oregon State, part of the big transfer portal class the Hurricanes got. Listed at six foot 240, big, strong, powerful runner. Had an awesome season last year. The one big thing I want to see out of him from a draft perspective is I know he can run the football. Catch some passes, my guy. 15 catches the past two years. Now, a big part of that was the Oregon State offense. That, that was a run-heavy offense for understandable reasons. They will air it out more with Cam Ward. So I, I think Martinez actually has a really good spot to showcase what he's able to do. If you like hot, nasty, badass speed, Jaden Ott is your guy. That is an explosive player. Now, I don't know how people are going to be watching Cal ACC games this year. If you do watch him, keep your eye out for him. There's going to be some big-time plays. He got a pretty heavy workload in 2023. He's had as many as 46 catches in the past two seasons. Ott is not a household name. It's Cal. They're going to be a fringe bowl team. I get it. But as a change of pace back, I'm very, very intrigued. Number seven is Nicholas Singleton. Uh, we'll come back to him a little bit more in depth for a reason we'll get to here momentarily. Let's jump to number eight on the list. That's DJ Giddens over at Kansas State University. You know, Deuce Vaughn leaves, who I will forever love, our small king, and Giddens shows up, or I guess takes over to an extent, and they didn't really miss that big of a beat. Not the same production, but still good production. Got way more carries, had way more production in 2023. Uh, I think top 10 underclassmen is about the right spot for Giddens. I don't have many uh, many complaints from that perspective. You know, I think top six, I think, is pretty right. You can argue seven to 10, and other guys can get in this mix as well, by the way. I skipped over seven because it's a Penn State player at number nine as well. Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen. Similar builds, about an inch difference, both listed at 225. A little bit more power backs, but not, not like lacking speed. And if I know one thing about the Penn State boys, they're going to test well. They almost always test well. So probably some undervalued athletic ability there. Then there's Trevor Etienne. Down at 10, I've seen him as high as like 5, 6 on some of these lists too, by the way. Uh, undersized to an extent at 5'9", 205. I want to see how he looks in, at Georgia. He showcased promise at Florida, but he never quite took the leap to being like the star the dude, the guy, the way that I thought he could. So I'm excited to see how he fares at Georgia this season.